Hello and welcome to Dingo's Ate My Podcast. I'm Paul. I'm Dave. I'm Justin. And this week we're discussing the episode Dirty Girls. <sighs> There's some dirty girls down here. <clears throat> this episode originally aired April 15th, 2003, attracting a record low uh, rating of 3.3 million viewers. A record low? Ooh. Yes. This was a really good episode. Yes, but again, you Ooh. wouldn't have known that at the time. Of course not, but still, this was really good. Yeah. yeah. And important. But yeah, you wouldn't know that at the time. Mm-hmm. Sucks though. Yeah. Yes, so uh, with the exception of a, season, a couple of season one episodes, this is the lowest rated episode. Hmm. Crazy. Anyway, let us move on to what happens in this episode. Hmm. <laughs> A young potential, Shannon, is chased through the woods by ringers. She accepts the assistance of a stranger wearing a priest's collar and driving a truck, and is horrified to discover she has fallen into a trap. The man, who, introduce him, who introduces himself as Caleb, terrifies her and burns his mark into her neck. He then gives her a message for the Slayer, which the viewer does not hear at the time. Mm. Stabs her in the stomach and forces her out of the car. Minutes later, Faith and Willow find the girl on their way back to Sunnydale after reinstalling Angel in Los Angeles and take her to the hospital. At his apartment, or uh, at the Summer's house, Xander has a dream about the teenage potentials and is cut short when the girls wake him to fix the toilet. Because of course we need a little moment of levity <laughs> with all the stuff that's going it's on here. so funny! Some big fantasy pillow fights going on in the background. <laughs> Gosh darn, male hormones in a complete it's, house filled with girls. It's so good. I love, like, oh my god. Just the... That would have been a mess to shoot. <laughs> just the first girl coming in and being like, I'm so worried about all this. I've it's never so... even been with a guy. I've never been with a guy either. And the second guy goes in. And it's just like, wow. Dream sequence. Nice work, Xander. It's so good. Uh, at the hospital, Faith asks Willow why the Scooby gang failed to warn her about the threat of the bringers. Faith subsequently encounters Spike chasing you know, a young woman and mistakenly believes Spike is evil again. The young woman, now in her vampire form, attacks Faith, who, borrowing steak from Buffy, quickly slays her. You all ought to put signs on people here. Yeah, it would help. <laughs> so good. Back at the house, Faith encounters a cold reception from both Dawn and Giles, and Spike explains that the tension is not all because of her. Meanwhile, the first evil reveals Buffy's form to Caleb, who is residing in the basement of a winery. The next day, Andrew tries to bring the disinterest the tries to bring the interested potentials up to speed on Faith's history, while they are quick to point out that Faith had killed a volcanologist. Not a Vulcan. A Vulcan, of course. Because of course he thought of Star Trek. <laughs> of course. Ah, Andrew, didn't we tell you not to say any more stories? It's so good. He tries. He just makes up some bullshit. <laughs> they watch Faith exercise in the backyard with fascination over this other slayer. At Sunnydale High School, Robin calls Buffy into his office where he fires her from her job, oh. <laughs> emphasizing the need for her to focus on the mission. In the summer's home, Faith sneaks down into the basement to smoke a cigarette and have a moment away from the wannabes, who, in her opinion, have too much energy and are needy for uh, more stories from her about her life. Spike sees her and also asks for a cigarette. She and Spike talk, and they bond over their uh, respective periods of being dangerous. Faith reveals uh, that they once met years ago when Faith was in Buffy's body, and Spike reveals that he and Buffy had been more than just friends at one point. Mm-hmm. Buffy, having been fired by Principal Wood so she can focus more on the mission at hand, comes down and seems a bit unnerved at seeing the two of them so cozy. Dawn uh, calls down that Willow has uh, reported from the hospital. Shannon is awake. Buffy goes to the hospital where Shannon tells Buffy of Caleb's message. He has something of Buffy's. Later at the house, Buffy tries to motivate the terrified potentials to accompany her when she attacks Caleb, 
who meanwhile is reenacting scenes of his past murders with the first evil. Buffy alone is confident in her plan. Giles, Spike, her friends, and the potentials all question her decision. Buffy and Faith, on a recon mission, follow up Bringer through the woods. They discuss Faith's intentions and her recent experiences with Angel before locating Caleb's stronghold in an old winery. At the summer's home, Xander directs the potentials on the methods of attacking in battle. When Rona criticizes Buffy's intentions, Xander strongly defends his friend, leaving Willow and Giles to stay behind to protect the more inexperienced girls. Buffy leads Spike, Faith, Xander, and the more experienced potentials, including Kennedy, Molly, Rona, uh, the Chinese one whose name I'm not going to try to pronounce, mm-hmm. Amanda, Diane, and several others to the vineyard. They divide into two groups, an assault team and a backup team. After an initial clash with the bringers, Caleb appears. He has super strength. He quickly knocks aside Buffy and Spike and breaks Rona's arm. Faith and Xander arrive in the backup team, but Faith is soon knocked unconscious. Caleb kills Diane and Molly, and Buffy orders a retreat after managing to knock Caleb down. Xander starts to yell that everyone needs to get out, but then is attacked by Caleb. Uh, Caleb says, so you're the one who sees everything. Let me see what we can do about that. He stabs his thumb into Xander's eye as Xander screams. Spike tackles Caleb, giving them enough enough time to get Xander and leave the vineyard. Alone and distraught, Buffy leaves the injured girls and uh, walks through the empty streets as Caleb tells the first, in Buffy's form, that their victory is imminent. So Xander got his eye poked out. Is he going to get an eye patch? Yes. Yay! (laughs) (laughs) He's going to have an awesome eye patch. Awesome. Hmm. Actually, it's just like a plain black eye patch. But still, Still, it makes it look awesome. Yes. Mm. He'll have a good excuse to have an eye patch. <laughs> well, he doesn't have an eye there, so... Do you, do you need an excuse to have an eye patch? No. Yeah. You can just rock an eye patch, I think. No. Yeah, you can. Because nobody's ever going to call you on it. No, yeah, I suppose. Unless they have the uh, nerve to kind of ask those particular sorts of things. I don't think anybody's calling you if you're rocking an eye patch. Like, nobody's going to be like, he's faking that shit. Mm. No. Alrighty, so what did you guys think of this episode? <sighs> Great. Ugh, all the things. Some things are starting to happen. Yeah, and Faith is back. And Faith is back. Isn't it nice to have Faith? Yes. It is. But a little worrying. And just, uh... And Caleb. Uh, uh. Caleb. Caleb's a great villain. I'm starting to see that, yeah. Yeah, so Nathan Fillion is joining the cast as Caleb. I've noticed. Mm. Is he going to be like the big bad? Like, other than the first? Yeah, basically. Okay. Mm. Alright, then. Because they need somebody that they can actually fight. Because the first is non-corporeal. Mm. Yeah, true. It's just that, like, at first, I wasn't sure what to think of him. Until, like, seeing his, like, super strength and the fact that he's Nathan Fillion. <laughs> Wait, but he's playing a villain, which is kind of, like, unusual for him. Because he doesn't At normally time, play villains. At the time, probably, yeah. And again, just sort of your introduction to him. The little kind of covers of things, and then just how that twists down to, oh, those are my boys. And it's like, what? And, he's oh. also, yeah, he's doing a southern accent, too, which is Those really are my good. boys. Back there. And just the particular angle they're taking with this, where... On the one hand, it's kind of questioning, is he just very religious, or is he a murderer hiding behind that sort of thing for his crimes? And just the first using him, why the heck does he have super strength? Yeah, that, really. I mean, like, the first could just imbue him with that power, like, that's... I mean, he's basically... He makes me think of glory, in a way. In the fact yeah, that he kinda. has like super power or super strength at least. Yeah, but he's not as powerful as Glory, I don't think. I guess. Because like he yeah. hits Buffy and she goes flying, but it's not like when Glory did. Yeah. yeah. Like she didn't like he didn't punch her into space. I don't think it was quite that extreme. I <sighs> think at the very most it was through a wall. Anyway. So for music, we have Robert Duncan doing the original score. And for international titles, oh, oh, we've got a few good ones. Mm-hmm. So, as we all know, the uh, episode title in English is "Dirty Girls." 
Yeah. Let's say how some other countries interpret that. In Czech, Ooh. unclean women. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. All right. In Spain, Spanish, impure girls. Mm. Okay, yeah. In French, the army of shadows. And in German, Caleb. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean... Hey, look, we're introducing a new character. Oh, he's the big bad for the season. <laughs> uh, yes, so... Uh, if neither of you have anything else to bring up about this episode... Well... I think I brought up everything, all the points I thought. I think just the interesting thing of seeing... Uh, Nathan Finnegan, I believe it was, just yes. Yes. coming into the series, just, oh, okay. It's like, okay, we're just going to introduce you to the series now, okay. Oh, yes, and I told you before we recorded, I have some fun trivia about that. Oh. Uh, Joss Whedon originally wanted to cast him as Angel. Really? I could see that. Yes. Huh. I could see that. The, could they not afford him at the time, or what was the deal? Oh, I don't that? think there would have been an issue affording him. He wouldn't have been like any kind of star. Mm-hmm. I think the okay. I think the um, network really wanted David Boreanaz though, mm. and that was like a um. compromise they had to make so he could get the rest of the cast he wanted. Mm. Okay, I th- I think I don't know if that's true, but I know that like there was or he auditioned for it and was in like the final few people. Ah. Dude. Hmm. I'm not sure exactly how that all went down, but, but at he the finally very, got a role. But at the very right. least, he got something. He did. Now, for next week, we'll be talking about empty places. The good empty places? Mm-hmm. Are... Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so the citizens of Sunnydale flee en masse, and Sunnydale becomes a ghost town. Oh, boy. Willow uses magic to get information from the police on Caleb, and Spike and Andrew leave to pursue a lead. So, everybody evacuate Sunnydale because the hell mouse opening or some shit's going down. Yeah, they're going to try to get information on Caleb, and Spike and Andrew are going to team up. Oh, no. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, and also, the group is going to make a decision about who their leader is going to be. Hmm. The group? Hmm. Meaning, yeah. what, the potential group? The potentials. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, until next time, I'm Paul. I'm Dave. And I'm Justin.